right, so the WTA finals draw and the groups for the uh, in the draw ceremony have just been decided. It's a very interesting couple of groups. Let's go have a look at who's in what group and also what the head-to-head -head is against each player in their selected groups. So the purple and the orange group. We're going to start with the purple group and Sabalenka. She has drawn Paulini, Rabakina, and Zhang. So that will be the purple group with those four players involved. Pretty interesting draw. She has got a good record against Paulini, an even record against Paulini, two and two when it's Paulini versus Sabalenka. Uh, Rabakina versus Sabalenka is 6-3 in favor of Sabalenka, but they've had some uh, epics over the time. And then again, Zhang, she's 4-0. However, the last match she did play against Zhang was a three-setter in Wuhan. So, a couple of tough matches there against those players in her group, Sabalenka. Palini, she obviously has a, a, an even record against Sabalenka, 2-2. Two two. Against Rabakina, she has got a uh, also a 2-2 two two record against Rabakina. She did beat her at the French Open. And then again, Zhang, she is 0-3, including a loss in Wuhan a couple of weeks ago. So, I guess the Zhang match is probably Palini's worst nightmare out of the bunch, but she does have some wins over the other two big names. Uh, Rabakina uh, against Sabalenka. Her record is 3-6, and six, including that close match in Madrid earlier in the season. Uh, against Palini, we just mentioned it, 2-2, two and two, including a loss last match they played in Roland Garros. And then against uh, Rabakina and Zhang, it's 2-0 in favor of Rabakina, but haven't played for over a year. And then Zhang against Sabalenka is 0-4, probably the worst opponent out of the bunch for her. Uh, against Palini, she's 3-0, and oh, so you'd expect her to win that one, considering they just played a couple weeks ago with Zhang getting the win. And then against Rabakina, like I said, it's 0-2 and two in favor of Rabakina, but they haven't played over a year, and Jung has been really good over the last couple of months, where Rabakina hasn't played much since Wimbledon. Orange group. We've got Sviantek, we've got Goff, Agula, Krajikova. This could be the more even of the group, because we just don't know what Sviantek's going to look like, because we haven't seen her for so long, and Krajikova, we don't even know if she's going to play. If she does play, she could roll heads. Sviantek's record against Goff is 11-1, including a French Open match that they played this year, with Sviantek getting the win. Uh, against Pagula, it's 6-4 and four in favor of Sviantek, but at the US Open, and Pagula got the win. So some recent confidence for Pagula in that matchup. And then against Krajikova, it's too old, uh, but they haven't played since Dubai last year where uh, where Krajikova went on that amazing run. So it's been a while since they've played, but like I said, if Krajikova's playing well, it's going to be really scary for everybody in this uh, in this WTA final. Goff against Sviantek, 1-11. She's going to have to really perform well. But like I said, Sviantek hasn't played lately. So, you know, if, if Goff's going to have a chance against Sviantek, maybe this week is the week, being the fact that she's played really well, Goff, over the last couple couple of weeks where Fiontek hasn't been around. Against Pagula, it's one win, four losses. That's going to be a tough one. And then against Krajikova for Goff, it is one, a 0-1 in favor of Krajikova, but that was only, uh, that was three years ago at the French Open in 2021 where Krajikova ended up winning the title. So they haven't played for a long time. So it's going to be tough for Goff to get out of this group because Pagula and Fiontek have such a good record against her. And if Krajikova is healthy, we know how good she can be. Pagula, when she plays Fiontek, it is four and six. But remember, Pagula did win their last match at the US Open a couple of months ago. Against Goff, it's four and one in favor Pagula, so she would like in that matchup. And against Krajikova, it's one and one, but they haven't played since Dubai last year. So Pagula would like a chance against Krajikova as well. So I'll be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Pagula goes 3-0 and in the group. I mean, she could beat Sviantek, Goff, and Krajikova, especially the way she's been playing uh, over the last couple of months since Wimbledon. You know, she won Canada. She made the Cincy final. She made the final of the US Open. She has a winning record against pretty much uh, a couple of these names, or at least against Goff is a good record, who's the, probably the more informed player in this section based on the last couple of weeks. So I don't know. I could see Pagula going 3-0 and potentially in this group. And Krajikova, who has been injured lately. We don't even know if she's going to play, but at this stage, she's in the she is in the tournament. Uh, against Sviantek, it's 2-0, including that match they played in Dubai last year, which was when Krajikova won the title against Sviantek in the final. Um, that's going to be interesting to see if that match, how that match looks. Uh, against Goff, it's 1-0, but like I said, it was the match they played at the French Open three years ago. Goff's a better player than she was back then. And against Pagula, it's also 1-1 one one with their last match being back in Dubai when Krajikova was on a tear. So I don't know if Krajikov is going to even play all her matches because we know she's coming in with an injury. But also, I mean, if she does, she might go 0-3, right? She's going to have a tough match against everybody involved in this group. But uh, top two get to the semis. Remember, that's how it works. Very interesting groups. I feel like there's no bad matchups. I mean, maybe, like I said, Krajikova's you know, injury or her health is probably a concern. And if she's not up to scratch, she's probably not going to be able to beat many or any of those players in her group if she's not 100%. Palini's got a tough group, but we know how tough she is. You know, she has beaten uh, both Sabalenka and, and Rabakina in her group before. So maybe she's not as much of the underdog in her group as we expect. But that's the groups. Let me know down in the comments below if you're watching this video later. Who is going to win the WTA Finals? I'm still back in Sabalenka. I mean, how can you not? She's been playing so well lately. She's the number one in the world. She wants to finish this year at number one. She let it slip this time last year in the WTA Finals. Gave it back to Sviantek. I'm sure she doesn't want to make that mistake twice. But there it is. WTA Finals starts on Saturday.